FDA is about to ban, <laughs> I can't even believe this, turmeric, nettles, wow, and uh, several other very, very healthy things that, uh, yeah. Oswellia, Astragalus, Artemisia, freeze dried aloe vera. Okay. Okay. Good morning. I'm going to turn this off. Hey, everybody. It's Phil and Serene. And morning. Gary Morgan. And I have my... Hey, everybody. Hold on. Let me just not make noise in the background. Make sure I don't miss anybody when they pop in. Hey guys! All right, so you know how we start here. Welcome. It's Tuesday. It is a semi-cloudy day, but it's a kind of summery sort of for here. And I'm with my roommate here, Gary, and we're here. Uh, we want to talk about a lot of stuff today, but first we got to talk about the weather. And would you please make a comment? And let me know if you can hear me because um, we are sharing a mic. Uh, today, and I wanted to uh, just make it clear enough for everybody. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the weather. Um, it is nuts. <laughs> it is nuts, y'all. So Carrie and I both woke up to this uh, news story. Um, it's snowing in Australia. Australia. And they first day of first summer. First day of summer in their, their uh, they meteorological have, summer. They have a at least a foot of snow, and so that's their world right now. And um, so we're really grateful to be here right now. Yeah, U.S. is about to be hit by some big storms too, the Southwest. Um, so it's good to be in Ecuador. It's nice and uh, it's, it's perfect here. here. 
We got no complaints. But, um, and I'm going to get some Mandelbrot's going, but I'll just have it set because I don't think we'll have time to mess with it today. Because um, we want to talk about integration. We had a yeah. really good a group last uh, Saturday night, Saturday and night. we're going to have another one on Thursday here locally. Right. And we wanted to um, really work with, and people are getting, responding, going, oh, because as I said, there's such a thing, there's such a thing to talk about, um, the integrating the beautiful visions and the stories that have come out um, of us right. from the medicine journey and looking at those. And I asked Gary to come in and Hook us up. <laughs> Tell us about what, why, why is this going on? Well, and uh, introduce yourself and well, tell well, us your background. Well, right? I'm, I'm I'm Gary Morgan. Um, I've been um, in the psychedelic world for 30 years, so you know, <laughs> got quite a history. But um, uh, it is very important to actually integrate uh, what you come across in your uh, visionary states, because um, we often misinterpret what's really going on much of it is uh um, it's a it's an active uh, waking dream state for the most part so when you're looking at many things it's very easy to um, look at things and believe they're more factual about the the universe than rather something that's coming from within inside of yourself or ourselves and so um it's uh, to me it's just very important to find the the connectors of you know what what is the process of your healing what are you actually learning what are you experiencing where does that go how, and how do you find your way clearly through um the mess of many many visions and you know and it really as i've found lots of people actually um um get lost yeah. in their process they end up not knowing what to do and um so right now um i really am very much into the integration period for many many years i was a facilitator in uh, many quote-unquote ceremonies and uh other things like that where i began to really see that there was a need for um me being on the other side of all of that rather than taking people into the psychedelic state which is very very common anymore you can you know you can throw a coin you can throw a coin and hit somebody who's doing it so but right now um i really feel like i need to be positioned on the other side of that so um i don't facilitate nearly as much as i used to i mostly uh work with people who come out of that place and stand on the other side waiting for them to go what the hell just happened to me <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then uh ah okay well here we go you know and uh I like to uh, impress upon people that the most of the messages that you really do receive through these um, these encounters with ayahuasca, San Pedro, or whatever um, method you use to to travel, that um, that there is another process going on that you need to be aware of, and um, and that is vital to uh, healing and. Um, you know, healing what's going on inside right. and um, so and yeah, healing healing is the key word and unlike dreams i imagine it's um the visions are really personal they're your story they're coming right. back to you to tell you something um and i have had lots of them and, and i'm i'm grateful for having a lot of dream experience before the medicine journey because they were they had similar qualities right. of well, what does that mean to me and, and knowing that it, this is all personal i need to look right. at this a little differently right um and it, um but i've never gotten any lottery numbers you know <laughs> <laughs> like, when, when am i gonna get something well, that's, useful well that's why we have fortune cookies oh <laughs> wow you know, you have Chinese restaurants here. Like, Your hey, lucky Morgan. number and Chinese word of the day. <laughs> but, you can but, have that option. So it is um, one of those that we have to take in. And, and I wanted to ask, um, what about bad trips? And what, hmm. what do you do when it's so frightening and you don't, I mean, I, I've met people that, you know, have the bad LSD or acid or whatever right. that trip was, and they're afraid to even touch the medicine. Right. Well, that? well, a couple of things are really kind of going on, and actually, there's one uh, that is far more physical than anything else. Is uh, 
when we start to have these bad experiences, what we tend to do is stop breathing. Uh, we breathe shallowly. And, and when we breathe shallowly, we're cutting off oxygen to the brain. And this is really actually a very physical thing. It's, uh, and so your brain is panicking. It's not getting enough oxygen. So you're feeding into um, some type of vision that is it's actually scaring you. But it becomes more intense when you stop, when you're only breathing at the top part of your lung. And you're... <sighs> So what I try to do is um, I try to get people to start taking deeper breaths and relaxing. And that usually clears things up. I also like to uh, tell people, envision a smile in your stomach as you're doing that. And uh, that really does actually clear lots of things up. It starts to lighten the load a bit. Now, uh, what brings on uh, various um, what I'm, bad experiences. I mean, I don't really consider any journey bad. I mean, you can scare the hell out of yourself. That's true. And uh, Sometimes you can we pay and go to movies for that. Right, exactly. I mean, and when it's your story and it's just so real and um, you're seeing many, many things that are foreign, um, you know, I, there are people who get freaked out when they see some being or whatever come to them and, you know, um, or they're just reviewing a part of their life where there's just, tremendous sadness or tremendous anger or whatever those things do come up and psychedelics do tend to make those much more powerful much more real in some way more real than they were when they were happening and but yet at the same time a lot of it comes down to um what you're doing in that moment and most of the time i would say it's uh, not breathing uh, not breathing properly which is something that we do in our daily state anyway most of us don't know how to breathe properly and uh, we are filled with anxiety all the time. Um, we let our thoughts get to us. And uh, those thoughts, um, well, if we let them freak us out, then we end up doing all kinds of things that, um, that <laughs> one thing leads to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to remind people that uh, much of the time you're really dealing with more of a physical anomaly where you're not breathing, you're tensing up. And we even know in a sober state that when one starts to tense up, um, anxiety and other things really do set in quite, quite hard. And uh, you can really feel it. Palm sweating, um, just nervousness, and um, sometimes, uh, what do you call it? Um, paranoia yeah. starts to set in and uh so uh in the facilitating process it's really more about calming someone down and letting them know they're they're okay yeah. you're in a safe place right. you know feel it it's out all in your head it's it, well it is and much of it is it really is all in your head yeah and in fact um, i would say that the vast majority of life mm -hmm. that freaks us out is all in our head it's all mm -hmm. made up stories mm -hmm. that are not real mm -hmm. and um you know, we love to attach to our little stories. We like to fill in the gaps, so to speak, of the things we don't know. And um, and there's also a protective and a survival measure to some of that as well, as you just right. assume, you know, that something's going on out there that right. eh, it's just really in your head. And it's all based on your prior experiences in life. So if you've had many experiences where people have betrayed you, people have done things where you're left holding the bag, then later on in life, you know, your reactions, our reactions are all about um, protection sure. and uh, keeping out of that. And we will often make up stories to keep ourselves out of those situations, even though the reality of that is not that at all. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of, it's, it's all about fear, breaks right. down to fear. Right. Now, a lot of us are told, beyond the dieta, um, to set intentions. Mm. Do they matter? Well, I think you can uh, you can do um, intentional work. However, I I have come to find that uh, through the many years of facilitating. Um, the true intention is uh, something already unspoken. It's already in your heart. It's already in your center. Uh, we go in and we create these, once again, more mental images. And those mental images, um, most of these... Um, most of these master plan teachers, uh, they don't really deal with the thing going on in your head. They deal with the thing going on in your heart. And why you're not open, why you're closed off to the world, um, 
So I would say that the true intention of most people when they go to any of these um, particular centers, um, the, the intention is already in their heart. Uh, the thing that got them to go in the first place, um, they have to remember what was going on in their life at that time, uh, that they were setting some type of true intention, uh, which called them to one of these particular master plant teachers. All right. So you <laughs> intend your heart is it well you have to be open i mean that's the thing when you go into something like this it's a, a, we we love to control we we love to take control oh, of a situation <laughs> right so my natural state of being i'm right. like oh, of course right and uh, you know uh, but we do we have a tendency to want to control and uh, mental intention is yet another form of control as far as i i, I see it it's yeah. truly my opinion i'm sure other people would disagree but uh, what I've seen is that we set these things in our head and we do have a focus and a goal. Um, it's not to say that the thing that you're coming up with in your head is your intention isn't also something that you want cleared up in your life. But typically it goes back to the original root of what is in your heart that needs to be cleared up to begin with. And uh, it comes with a bag of tricks. But you you get taken to the the, the place within where many of uh, life's difficulties actually stem from mm -hmm. and uh really we we have to admit to ourselves that we like to control and when we try to control the world what happens is uh oh, well yeah you it's and you, you find yourself quite disappointed yeah. now, i like to use the um i like to use the analogy of um you know someone who's out to uh out to sea on their boat the captain you know he cannot scream at the raging ocean to stop but what he can do is navigate that boat through the waves through the storm to get to the other side mm -hmm. and that is the true ability of we what we humans need to do more is um take command uh, rather than control and i mm -hmm. use those words very specifically very interesting yeah command okay. over control right because you cannot, you have no control over anything, but you can command the situation around you and how you deal in that. I like that. Okay. All right. Um, is there anybody who should not be doing medicine journeys? Who would you hmm. well, dissuade, dissuade from? I don't know that I would ever dissuade anybody from doing it because it really is a personal decision. Mm -hmm. However, I think that some people, um, you know, to be honest, I mean, I think there really are a number of people that use the uh, word healing. And what they really want to do is just go have a DMT experience or they want to go have a psychedelic experience. And there's justification around that, which is high. fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's fine to actually admit to yourself that that's what you want to do rather than couching it and... Um, weird spiritual yeah. words yeah. and uh, other things like that to find justification for what you're doing but um i i would say if you're not really called to it if you're not really feeling it then you're the person who doesn't need to do it and there are many many other methods to get there i mean some people will call psychedelics a shortcut and i would disagree with that entirely in fact it can complicate things more than right. say sitting and doing meditation daily doing sure. your your qigong doing yeah. other things that keep you centered right. and um keeping centered is 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 key so um i don't i don't believe i should ever tell anyone not to do it but if you truly are not called to it then you're the person who really shouldn't be sitting in that room. Right. And if you feel like you're being dragged along with someone else to be support and you end up in a situation, you ah, I don't want to be here, you know, because um, I've seen that, too. I've seen people come along to these uh, centers, go to these ceremonies and, and tell me, well, I, you know, I don't really feel like I should be here, but I'm here in support of my friend. And. Uh, and say, well, do you want to do it? Do you want to do you want to drink yeah. tonight? Well, I really don't. OK, well, sit with that. And really, I mean, don't let anybody else pressure you into this. Um, you know, part of the facilitating process is respecting the other person, um, making sure that you're asking the right questions. And if somebody truly does not feel comfortable, do not pressure them into it. Let them take the path that they feel they need to take. And um, once again, you know, I find facilitators like to control an environment where, you know, they'll apply pressure. Well, everyone in the room needs to do this, blah, blah, blah. And 
I find that to be, um, it's very insensitive and disrespectful to somebody's uh, journey. Um, listen, y'all got your money. Let them do what they want to do. And uh, most of my role there was really just spending time afterwards speaking to people about what had happened through the night, uh, what scared them, what made them cry, uh, what gave them elation. Um, and uh, there's the gamut of, of responses through this. And some people just don't feel anything at all. I mean, they'll come out of it and say nothing happened. And um, so the range is pretty incredible. So talking to people and figuring out what is really going on is very important for the facilitator. Is there any other reason? I mean, okay, healing, working in the heart. A lot of Western... Um, medicine will give it an okay for dealing with addiction. Have you seen yeah. that change? Actually, or? yes. I mean, okay. um, iboga uh, oh, is yeah. quite good for um, for helping someone with addiction. Now, once again, that is still your call. You, uh, you know, it can show you what it is that is causing you to constantly choose addiction over health. Any addiction? Like, uh, like, I have well, an addiction um, to chocolate. Well, uh, um, Iboga in particular is uh, quite good for um, narcotics, alcoholism, and it is often used for spousal abuse, um, you know, to, yeah. to help men get over um, their violence and their anger. And it really does address that. Now, I, I've known a number of, I know it's really, but but that type of a thing is also a form of addiction. It's a form of, you know, uh, it's a form of control. It's a form of, I need my life in this frame and you're not behaving that way in it. So I'm going to beat you down. Um, hmm. Or they don't like that somebody has a stronger voice or is speaking truth. And so uh, the way people react to truth is... Um, Wow. <laughs> you know, it can Reaction. be it can be really intense. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you hear the thing that you don't want to hear, it can cause any number of reaction. It can cause introspection or it can cause violence. So, uh, you know, uh, but um, I would say that many of these, you have to be uh, an active participant. Now, Ibogaine has been shown to actually shut off receptors in the brain block them so that you actually can't use any of those drugs afterwards uh, without feeling violently ill but that only lasts for a period of time and none of these none of these um, master plan teachers will take you all the way um, they can do a lot to help you do uh, resolution now in the case of ayahuasca ayahuasca has been known to help people heal cancer uh, parkinson's and several um, Yet they had uh, real long-term work. Uh, they didn't uh, just didn't Born. just go in and drink three times and uh, voila. Yeah. They actually were put on real plant dietas. They were put on. Um, they were put in a situation where they were asked to focus on why are you giving yourself cancer. Mm. You know, and um, that's a hard one. I mean, we always want to look outside for that. Problem. We do. We want to point. Right. We're, we're, we're looking at environment. We're looking at food. We're looking at many things. But the root cause of most illnesses is dis-ease with the self. Yeah, emotional. Right. And it, uh, wow, a hummingbird just hit the window. Did you see that? I heard it. <laughs> Thump. But, <laughs> sorry, hummingbird. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, but, but where was I? <laughs> Sorry, hummingbird distracted me. I'm, uh, I'm easily distracted. Oh, I'm going to jump then. Good. Okay. Let me jump to another question. Um, let's go back to the visions. And mm. when you do see entities, mm. um, because one of the common things Terrence McKenna talked about was McKell's. Mm. during his DNT and I've heard other people talking about the praying mantis being mm. or some of the Indian deities that show up um, so do we you know so hello and you know well, I think each, well and, I think each person is individual I mean yeah. I've done those things so many times and I never once saw a machine elf ever I uh, and I've seen only the insectoid type mantis thing one time at a distance and it wasn't 
you know, I just told it to leave me alone. So, <laughs> but a lot of people do have these very similar and common visions. And I wonder sometimes if just the idea that's put out there doesn't cause the mind to actually grab those things and recreate them in another form. Now, I tend to think DMT in of itself is a very different, um, it's a, it's a, it's a whole different uh, experience than say ayahuasca. I mean, I like in uh, DMT to shoving your head into another dimension and looking around for a few minutes and like, whoa, what, what is that? Um, whereas ayahuasca is a much longer process and it, it's really, even though the colors and uh, the images and the patterns and other things look very, very similar, it is not the same it's not the same process. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in DMT, you don't necessarily get somebody who's really speaking in depth to you, where uh, many people through the process of ayahuasca and sometimes even San Pedro get uh, the full on energy of the plant that's actually mm -hmm. guiding and and helping and scaring and loving you all at the same oh, time. Oh, yeah. You know, that so it's happening. You're, it does. It the does. Emotions. So you know, um, I I don't like to put things into one category. I mean, now Terrence McKenna for is, is for for all that he's done. I mean, he's rather verbose, and he really does come from his own perspective, and um, we each are individuals. So um, there's no patent one thing that everybody fits fits into. Um, there are many people who don't have these experiences at all, and I for one, I, you know. I'm, probably done this stuff more than Terrence. And I gotta say, never experienced any of those things. Now I did experience entities, but I also recognize them as a part of myself as well. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, these medicines only draw up what's already within you. It's not really giving you, uh, but it's also showing you that you are um, your own universe. You are a dimension in of yourself. So where these things come from, where these mysterious things, they're, they're within you somewhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, this is very important to understand, I think, is that um, each person really is an individual and each of these uh, plants, when they address you, are addressing what is already established within you. Right. It's not really pulling stuff completely out of the ethers that you don't really understand. I mean, all the things that you're recognizing, you recognize, you just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting <clears throat> after a journey, and I know it was instinctually true for me, I didn't want to do nothing. I was like, I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to just sit with all that I saw and try to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. is, is there a normal, I don't want to say a letdown time or an integration period that you should give yourself and allow for your body? Well, once again, that's another thing that I really believe you have to feel out for yourself. It's your personal journey. Uh, there are a number of people who um, actually want to go into some isolation for a period of time. And I, I recommend, you yeah. know, go into a place where you do introspection. Um, try not to try not to hold the vision as a as, as, as a matter of fact, because uh, many times they are not. They can reflect what's been going on in your life they can reflect incidences uh, you can go back and re-experience to a certain extent childhood trauma um neglect abuse um you know um abandonment whatever those issues are just the sadness of loss um that happens a lot um i've seen people cry all night for their loss and uh then they need a couple of days to just like sit with that and i tell them not to overthink any of that just you know, you've just muddied the pond by sticking your foot into it. Let the mud settle and let the water clear on its own time. And then when you're ready, um, and during these times, it's very important to try to keep the mind as calm as possible because the mind wants to process everything. The mind wants to take everything and try and organize it. And sometimes what you're seeking is out of place. It doesn't have an organization spot. And... Ooh. <laughs> that's a hard one to think about. It's like, I don't have a place to put this. Right. Especially if it's an emotion that's 
That's right. Fine. That's right. I mean, it really can be. Yeah. It really can be that type of a thing yeah. where I don't know where this goes in my life. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is enough to scare some people. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know what this is. I don't, I don't know how this belongs inside of me. I never saw it before. Um, well, it was brought up because you buried it at some point. <laughs> you know, it was, I mean, these are things we nail ourselves to our, um, our ideas and our ways of thinking. Um, and we limit ourselves by not wanting to change the way we think mm -hmm. about things. And, you know, if you really pay close attention, you're going to find 98% of everything in your head is actually not true. It's all made up. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. what you believe about other people, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about the world, um, well, it's all through perspective. It isn't actually real. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you hold those solidly, you claim these ideas to be truth then you sort of crystallize them in place within yourself and that creates immobility mm. and you need flexibility right. i mean if you want to heal you need absolute flexibility and above all you need to be honest honest with yourself yeah. and uh, that is one of the most difficult things that a human can experience is personal honesty because uh, we do not want to admit we're really a part of this and doing our thing. And we feel like we're messing up. But there's no manual. There's no thing here that says, and, and everything that we think of is all made up. It's all made up by man. If you look, if you look at everything. the everything, if you look at the rest of the world uh, with all the animals and creatures, they don't come up with this stuff. They don't do any of this stuff. They just fit the pattern of nature. And they find their place in nature. And I believe really many of these plant medicines are actually asking you to find your place in nature. Mm. You are rather unique in some, to some extent, but at the same time, you are an animal. You live here on this earth. There is a role. We are caretakers. And most of nature just wants you to come back to nature mm. and try and live in harmony and balance with that. Right, right. And uh, the universe only responds to balance anyway, nothing else nothing it doesn't give a shit about your prayers it doesn't give a shit about your life it doesn't give a shit about any of those things it only operates on balance and that is a tough one uh, you know because so when you say balance though uh, I'm, explain to me a little further because i'm like it only responds to balance so it's trying to always bring things into balance that's right okay Right. I mean, we're so out of balance now on the planet well, exactly. in terms of the way we think of ourselves and our position of authority on this planet that, uh, well, look at what's happening. And we can blame it on so many things. You know, climate change is all due to mankind, blah, 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 blah. I mean, we know we have created an environmental disaster. We know this. Yeah. We did it. Um, that we have to clean up. I mean, there is no, <laughs> there's no one coming from outer space to fix this. Uh, this is part of the human condition. You know, you, you are learning, we are learning how to take care of this planet. And I've said many times, you know, really the only way to actually understand something is to destroy it, to break it apart into its pieces, into its intimate pieces as to what it does. And then we can go back and say, now I know what that does. I mean, wow. how many people ended up dying on an operating table um, while, while somebody was learning heart surgery before somebody, oh, Oh, don't cut that. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> every time we cut that, they die. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, it's all trial and error. It's all, but we come with a heavy load of emotion where we like to blame, blame others, blame ourselves, blame, blame, blame. And there is no blame anywhere. I mean, we like to subscribe to our, to the ideas that make us feel comfortable. And um, for me, really, like I'm in a process of, um, taking the name out of everything, uh, unlabeling the world, unlabeling my thoughts, unlabeling, you know, like, like I've said before, a zebra doesn't know it's a zebra. An oak tree does not know it's an oak tree. A blade of grass does not know it's a blade of grass. That is all made up by man. They are just part of the single organism that makes up what we call earth. Right. Wow. You know? I, I really love that unlabeling part and really... Um, it really takes the separateness away from us and it brings us and and 
the unlabeling part is hard to do. It's very hard to do. Yeah. It's not easy. You want to, well, that's that. And that's why that is because right. it's this and it's that. And I'm this and that. Right. And I'm like, ooh. You know, and we do it to so many things. I mean, you can go uh, right down and just take a general tree. First, it's a juniper tree. Second, it has blueberries. Third, it's green. Four, it's got a trunk. I mean, we go through and we've got a name for every single part of that um, that tree, right. that organism. Right. But in truth, it's no different than you are. Mm. It's the same energy. It's the same force. Mm. It all comes from the same thing. Mm. Everything springs out of this planet. Yeah. So uh, when we're here, we we should try to experience the world as we are the same thing as in this separation the only thing that you are separate is your perception that's it that's the only you're you're the very same thing but you are existing in a different perception than everything else and uh, that's what it boils down to at least to me my opinion yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not stating anything as fact because I I don't know shit either. So. <laughs> you know, I'm Figuring I'm just I'm just going on my own experience, right? and that's all I actually have in this entire world. I mean, whatever somebody else tells me, I actually have to go and examine it and find the experience myself before I can say yay or nay to any of that. In fact, uh, through much of the the my my journey through psychedelics, so many people have said so many things trying to take dogma or turn it all into a dogma, into a type of religion, whatever right, it is. Right, right. And um, I've gone through and tested every one of those things to find out, mm, yeah, pretty much, mm, no. <laughs> no. It's no. I mean, that's uh, all of those things that people say, you know, like, I can't tell you, you know, I sat there in ayahuasca ceremonies just smoking the hell out of weed, trying to find out, well, why do people say that, these two teachers shouldn't come together. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they worked just fine for me. I didn't have any problems. Yeah. Um, I even smoked DMT in the middle of an ayahuasca ceremony to find out what that did. Right. And uh, it just stopped and became a DMT experience, very different than ayahuasca, and then turned right back into ayahuasca. And the very first thing I heard is, are you finished? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's get back to uh, what we were doing. Right. Working on ourselves. And so, I mean, I tested the waters myself. And that's what people need to do more of, is test it yourself. Don't just listen to somebody. Um, you know, we we like to just pick up examples of why things are just because somebody said it. And uh, that's not necessarily the case. It's not always true. Mm. Don't let somebody else's fear of something become your fear of something without testing it. Mm. Oh, and, and that would come often as a warning. Right. Right. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Right. It's well, how many people have told you, you know, like you want to go off to an exotic place in the world, but because there happens to be some sort of faction there, like, you know, around here we have FARC, you know, we've got a bunch of other things that people are very, very scared of. But, you know, how long have I been here? I've never, I've never once run into FARC. I've never run into any of the yeah. things. Now, if you put yourself in positions where that is really what's going on, and you're in the middle of it, chances are you're going to encounter it. But in general, you know, um, I can't tell you how many people told me not to go to India because it was going to be, oh, it's so dangerous. It's so this, it's so that. And I got to India and I found out none of that was really true. I found my own versions of, oh, oh dear, what have I got myself into? But it wasn't any of the stuff that, what, that yeah, people had told else. me, yeah. you know. Um, and, uh, I survived it very, very well. It, you know, I made it home and all is good. And I've traveled around the world and yeah. done many, many different things only to have so many people tell me you shouldn't do that. You you know, why don't you get a job? Why don't you, why don't you spend your money and get a house? Well, yeah. those things have absolutely no meaning to me. Uh, I mean, it, yeah. But you'll, you'll be stuck with it. Right. I, I mean, then, travel. I mean, you're acquiring burdens. Um, you know, we all have enough burdens without acquiring uh, these other things that we have to take care of, you know, giant boats, giant houses. And, you know, what are you really doing that for? Um, and some people are very, very happy living lives uh, that they are as shallow as a piece of paper. They're very comfortable with that. And I have no problem with people living that way. You know, I mean, if, if you have my life, what you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if, if, if your life revolves around Gucci and Prada, 
and that's what makes you happy, then let your life revolve around Gucci and Prada. Prada. However, don't be the one complaining when you have no water to drink. Oh yeah. You know, that? because you know they poison bag. because they're poisoning it with you know um, the chemicals and whatever we do to process this. So I mean, there are double standards everywhere, double and triple standards for everything. Do you advise people that um, should everybody at one time in their life look at a medicine tray? I don't think so. I mean, I think we can find our own way. I mean, those um, those plants and uh, other things are around to have those experiences if you want them. But um, I don't believe that it ever should be mandatory for people to experience those. It's just not the way. There are some people who are very dedicated to other other ways, and they work very, very well. I mean, Look at the vast majority of monks. I mean, they're, you know, um, they're living way high in the mountains doing their thing and they're transcending as much as anybody else. Right. But they're not imbibing mushrooms or ayahuasca or any of those things. Um, yet they can also find it on their own. And it's, everything yeah. is just a way, you know. Right, right. Multiple modalities. Right. I mean, like, like they say, I mean, there are many ways to the top of the mountain. You know, and uh, we'll all reach the top of the mountain when we reach the top of the mountain. There's, just be where you are, where you are, and try to be comfortable in that. You know, there's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable. Ooh, <laughs> what, a, what a feeling. Uh, because you feel that in your body and you want to shift it out of your body. Right. And you look at it as something is wrong when you're uncomfortable. Right. So, and it's really just your body telling you it doesn't like it. But that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the the vast majority of the things that we have learned in our lives that gave us power, that gave us forward momentum were the terrible things that happened yeah. to us. That's, that's, I mean, standing in this vapid light and pretending that uh, you're all spiritual and everything while, you know, avoiding everything in life that doesn't help you you know it's usually when you get down to the nitty-gritty and the, the real starts to happen you know your love dies yeah. your you know you've been betrayed yeah. uh you placed your trust and all your money in something only to find down the road somebody just took you for a ride yeah. and you learned a valuable lesson from right. that you know true you do need the pain you pain need it you need balancer. it well we live in a du uh we live in a duality and uh no matter what we want we cannot uh as long as we are uh, in these bodies and uh, doing this thing we cannot avoid duality but what we can do is arrive at somewhat of a non-dual space within ourselves where we we accept both directions of energy you know the yin and yang uh, mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. define uh, the directions of energy and neither one of them are bad or good mm -hmm. they're directions of energy they're vibration and that's the thing that we love to do is label things good or bad and none of those yeah. exist and we want to tilt you know right we're trying to right <clears throat> aren't we trying to bring ourselves in the balance well yes um, and that's uh, truly been a, um, that's quite the human journey. Right. Back as we go, we're pretty much repeating the same, pretty much repeating the same event over and over with just different clothes and better weapons and, uh, you know, different housing. I mean, really, it's, it's the same stuff. But here we are. Uh, human consciousness, I believe, is at this is, is at a transformative place where we actually do have the ability to come to balance and um, understand uh, this balance better rather than uh, fostering all of these ideas out of profit, money, um, control and power, uh, which clearly none of that works for most of us. The, the human condition. Right, right. Is there um, an opportunity for us to, uh, I don't want to say grow beyond or not need the medicine, but is it, is it a maturity level? Do we take it at a certain mm. stage of our life? Well, it's interesting you ask that because I, you know, in my own life, I've sort of come to find that it's not really a spiritual experience as much as a 
gathering enough life experience. Um, life experience uh, really is the key to understanding who you are. Um, once you've been, once you've gone through enough of the same pattern over and over, there's a certain point where you're like, I hate that shit. I don't want that to happen anymore. So at some point, it's life experience in of itself that's actually telling you, oh, wow, how many times am I going to make that bad decision? Um, it's not God. It's not spirituality. It's not some being from the other side. It is your actual gathering of information from what you've done in your life and examining it and realizing that those decisions that we make can oftentimes put us in repetitive cycles of suffering. And uh, those repetitive okay. cycles of suffering, at some point, life experience says, do you really want to do that again? And uh, many of us after the age of 50 are like, mm, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Anymore. I'm way too old for this and my back can't handle this. <laughs> so, so, and I just don't have the patience anymore to deal with other people's, you know, crap yeah and uh it's usually right around you know your 50s mid 50s most people want to start taking full command of themselves and start getting away from um being underneath of someone else's power you know and in exercising or exerting your own power. right exerting command over command the self because like you really that. have no power i mean you only have a power over your decision that's it. I mean, uh, nature can take you out in a second, you know, and uh, as, as it stands, you have no idea how many minutes left you have in your life. It could be a billion, could be two. <laughs> you just don't know. So, you know, I'm all about living in the now, in the very, very present. Uh, there is no future and the past is really just there to look at, to assist with making uh, decisions that direct the future. And it only ever happens in the now. You're only living in this very moment. You're not living in March, 2020, when you're setting up a giant plan to do all this stuff. You could be dead by Christmas, right? So, you know, it's okay to throw out um, a direction as far as I'm concerned. Like, okay, I'm looking at that. But you can only make the decisions and movement in the very now. And when we live in that now, in this very moment, things are very, very different because we're not pulling in stories of the future. We're not pulling in stories of the past. I mean, the past is very inaccurate in your actual memory logs in your brain. They're not, they're not, they're not accurate. And the future is just so unseen that that's completely fantasy. Whatever your one is thinking of, um, the future it doesn't actually exist how many times do we spend years and years trying to develop something only to find our belief in it we get there and then it didn't work i mean i mean look at often look at look, look at now, look, at, look at so many other things where you actually in the real life you can see they spent billions of dollars and then it exploded on the uh like india just had their, right uh, yeah they just crashed on this on you know and i mean how long did they work on that how long and then they had the expectations of this and this and this I hope they made two. and what they did they just littered the moon in the end <laughs> yes there is that all right got another question yeah your favorite journey oh gosh Hmm. I, the board got some uh, stories, y'all. We <laughs> wait till we do storytelling night. We're gonna do uh, the favorite uh, out of body. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've had so many very profound experiences that uh, I don't know that I have a favorite, but I, um, I, I do have a few that I think were rather pivotal in how I suddenly went, oh, had the eureka moment, like, oh. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, for the most part, I mean, they uh, for a long time they were just very, very entertaining to me. I had no idea how to make rhyme or reason out of, out of any of it. So, but uh, I, I would say that one of the most uh, potent experiences ever were my first three ayahuasca experiences were. After, after spending years and years doing it, I, I realized later on that those three were the only ones I ever needed. They explained my entire process to me. And uh, when I arrived at where I, that, that medicine, 
uh, uh, wow. I, it just was, oh, wow. That's amazing. You showed me. You showed me what I was doing, where I was going, and how I was getting there. But yet, I didn't actually put any of that together until I arrived. And then it was able to look back and, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I really wish you'd made that clearer. <laughs> but but uh, really, I mean, um, so many of them are fantastical and amazing. And, and we do learn a lot, but we have to stop holding that as truth, that it, it, it illuminates like everything else. It illuminates the situation with inside of us that, that needs to be addressed. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate um, in the way it's being told. That's the hard part. You know, um, you know, when, uh, you know, Jesus is well known for parables, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Buddha was well known for telling stories as well. And those stories, they didn't necessarily happen, mm -hmm. but they were valuable to the moment uh, that somebody needed to realize something. It's about putting and we need to realize that about our own stories. And most of the time when we come back and we tell our story, we're not really including the real depth of it and i know that like i can tell stories of my time in india but i will purposefully leave out the exquisite anguish mm -hmm. the exquisite suffering and the lack of understanding and my unwillingness to understand oh wow you know i don't tell people that sure, stuff sure. in the general story but, you get it, but, you but know. in 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 more of a written form i'm i'm much more willing to go there and much more willing to, because, you know, in a general setting, when you're telling somebody a story, you, you don't want, you don't want to go to the place where, well, I was throwing a gigantic temper tantrum in the middle of the street. <laughs> when? <laughs> yeah. Sort of, sort of leave that little part <laughs> out. So you're, oh, wow, you had an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I had somebody come walking right up to me and said, hmm. You must be from the United States. I said, oh, how do you know that? Well, they're the only ones that do that in the middle of the street. Oh, <laughs> And that was a very humbl oh, humbling moment yes. for me. You know, I, I, I don't tend to tell <laughs> some of those other stories. But also, um, you know, with psychedelics, I, you know, and I have to be very honest with this, you know, for the first first 10 years I was doing psychedelics. I was just doing them to have fun. I wasn't doing them because I was trying to find anything spiritual, even though it rocked my world. And I realized that I'd been lied to about uh, so many things. And I began to realize that there was something larger going on. But at the same time, um, I, I was looking for ways to get out of my suffering, not um, and, and when I say get out, I mean temporary, yeah. like I just need to go and have flights of fancy and get away from my real life rather than actually deal with any of the problems. Um, and then it wasn't until much later where, um, I had some pretty potent experiences where a particular, uh, mushroom experience, in fact, where, um, I was paralyzed, dropped to the ground and, uh, three beings, I would call them, uh, healers or, um, something came from the ceiling and for about 45 minutes gave me what for for uh the the proper and improper use of these um plants and telling me listen you know it's okay it's okay to come and play it's okay to do all this but please do not keep entering this world and doing no work Ooh. don't come Ooh. over here and grab knowledge and then misuse it um we're trying to show you something very important and if you're just coming here to play you're just coming here to waste time and escape your life well these beings pretty much told me if you come back here without figuring out how to find your own sacred center and find out why you're coming here mm -hmm. you know and what you're doing if you're just escaping mm -hmm. well we don't really want you here if you're just escaping come and learn something so that your escape isn't isn't worthless your escape leads to something and um that was very very powerful that actually yeah. scared me yeah. and um you know they did tell me that if i came back uh, again and and did this uh, disrespectful thing uh they would send me to a place where i would never come back to psychedelics that it, they would show me what true excruciating pain was and i thought Okay. <laughs> so for three years, I didn't do anything. Wow. And then, of course, I had a very bizarre experience walking down the street, which I told you 
where um, a Navajo man was walking up the street <gasps> and he's carrying a big black plastic bag and he stops and he says, are you Gary? And I said, I am. i never seen the man in my life. And he reaches into the bag and he pulls out this giant handful of dried peyote and hands it to me and he says, they're calling you, you have to come. And I thought, what? <laughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm like, eh, no way I'm going over there. No <laughs> way. I, I, they just beat me up last time, I, you know. And I was all butt hurt and offended and all that stuff <laughs> by the by those beings, yeah, you know, that yeah, came in yeah. and, you know, and, uh, but I was also very, very scared, you know, when you're already suffering and then somebody, something on the other side says, we'll show you real suffering. Uh, Oh, I'm good. God, uh, this already hurts so bad. Where on earth could they possibly send me? Right. Well, I'm not going there. <laughs> but anyway, I just put the peyote away for a long time. And probably about seven months later, I'm walking down the street and in the exact same spot. I run into the man before he standing there again. And he says, why didn't you come? You have to come. They're calling you. And, uh, I was like, who are you? It's the messenger. I'm just here to tell you that, you know, you should come, that they want to talk to you. And, I, you know, and at that time, I, you know, I was into so many different things and straddling new age ideas and straddling so many different concepts and half crazy and nuts myself just out of my own misery. You know, I didn't want to believe any of this stuff. I thought it was all like, you know, crazy but i tend to have had this really weird off kilter life that uh you know where, where i tell other people be practical my own life doesn't show any kind of practicality at all so this is why i don't know shit <laughs> but but at the same time i mean i'm used my experience in a way where i was able to um take this higher mysticism and somehow bring it back into a center where there is mysticism there there are mystics there are people who do transcend worlds and do uh travel about and have and can acquire great wisdom oh, yeah. now when one comes back into this world one has to realize that you know anything that comes out of your mouth has now become dogma it's become a thing it's mostly meant for ourselves yeah. but if you can find it within yourself correct it within yourself and then live by example rather than saying well such and such deity from way. such and right. such place told right. me such and such thing and you all have to follow that mm -hmm. well that's bullshit or the old ways we must go right. back to the right pick yeah a, pick a deity, right pick right a you know and 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 yeah, exactly you know and for me it was really about ah it's all for me first and it's not about me to express it to anybody it's about actually learning to live that and become the example of that. And in fact, all of your masters have told you, you must believe and live it, you know, telling other people, you know, and, uh, you know, the Christian idea of spread the word. Well, you know, that's a made up idea too. I'm pretty sure Jesus never told anybody to go spread the word. He pretty much told everybody live the word, live it, man. Live don't it, spread man. it, live it. Right. And there's a huge difference. And, uh, you know, uh, the church and religion, they've done so much to, fractionalize all that stuff so it can be a controlling environment rather than a liberating environment of of learning and understanding and so tell me what do we what's group like we you have two ways of working with people as a group and what happens in the group discussion oh uh, right well i like to keep group discussions sort of surface and you know uh express just general ideas about uh how to integrate on a one-on-one -on -one level that's where i will take you much deeper and start calling start calling out the bullshit um you know in a general environment i like people to uh put out there what they're experiencing what they're seeing and how they're not understanding what one thing is and, and there's general ability there's a general ability to uh to, to to enlighten people over their uh ideas but on a personal level when they come to me and they really want to um start getting to the nitty gritty this is where the true me comes in uh, you know call me an asshole for nothing you know because i can really get in there and like okay you realize that that's a lie that you're telling yourself a lie he and i do <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know and just and, when you need it too and and they and and you know there's the resistance to that at first but then if they take a moment and then i will piece it out and I'll take each piece and say 
do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see how you made this up? This doesn't even exist. This is not really a thing. This is something you're clinging on to to prevent you from moving forward. And we can make the smallest thing the largest obstacle. And so for me, I really want to get in there and uh, piece it all out so you can really, really look at it. And I, I consider myself simply a conduit between um, between places. I, I'm... I, yeah. Other people use the word healer or whatever, but I, you know, you heal yourself. And that is what I'm trying to actually bring about is to get you to realize that you are the only one who ever can do anything to save and help yourself. No one else can do that. And no matter what we do, we can go out and try and find love or the salvation in another person. And we really all know how that ends. You know, um, that doesn't usually end in a very pretty picture. It usually ends in a bigger mess and uh, complicates the situation and then uh, allows us to have further blame on something that's not us you know and um our personal responsibility to ourselves is paramount to growing and thriving and personal responsibility is everything you know you need to take care of yourself there's no one out there other than you you will walk this life no matter if you're in 40 million people you will still be the only one experiencing what you're experiencing you're the only one and so in group, it's more about a general expression. Let people throw out, well, I don't understand why this happened. I don't understand. Well, you know, in a general setting, it's good to clear some of those things up. Well, what were you feeling? What was going on? Um, but then when you come, you know, uh, on an individual, be prepared to really get down to some hard work. And uh, I'm, I'm very non-judgmental. I'm been there myself so many times and I will share with you my most humiliating situations so that you feel comfortable and I'm not afraid to share those things because I'm just as human as everybody else I have really messed up in this life sometimes I have really hurt people and I will use those as, as examples like I can't fix what I did but I can learn from it and I can move forward so that I don't do that again I don't put people in those situations and I don't put myself in that situation and uh, these are the real patterns of discipline discipline is not necessarily just sitting there and breathing true discipline is over the mind the mind is the destroyer of your being if you let it um, that's the only thing that actually is out there that turns you against yourself is your mind. When you're in a deep state of depression and you're screaming at yourself about how you should end it and how you, you're not worth it. Nobody loves you and everything is, you know, you've just screwed up so badly in the world that nobody will ever love you again. That's your own voice and your own demon, you know, telling you a lie, you know, and, um, uh, well, because it comes from within and it sounds so loud and very direct, it's very easy to believe. Um, we will, uh, that's why coming to um, self honesty is the most difficult thing we can do is we want to believe what we say to ourselves. We want to believe we're not worth it. Uh, and then uh, sometimes it's uh, done the other way, there's an overcompensation of. I'm better than everything, yeah. Okay. You know, and uh, we so, have a nice label as a narcissist, right? That. You know, and you really you you're, you're going the other way, but that's also just as self defeating, is yeah. because that's also a lie, yeah, right. you know. And um, you know, I'm a professional chef, and I got to tell you, I, I can't tell you how many times I thought I was the big fish, only to go into another kitchen and find out, oh crap, I don't know anything in this kitchen. I don't know what the hell you're doing and trying to pretend like I know better only to find myself quickly humiliated with an onion upside my head. <laughs> you know, <laughs> true story. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Thank you very oh much for gosh. having me. He's, he, 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 wait, and y'all, he didn't even get you all the good stories because I hear stories when we be sitting around smoking and I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> I, yeah. a, you can hear I, a pin drop and like, I definitely have some crazy ass stories. Crazy ass stories. So we will get those and we're going to do a moth 
storytelling style events mm, yeah fun and uh we're gonna be sharing those stories but thank you for joining and popping in thanks Thomas, yeah thank you all for uh, subscribing as well and um y'all every tuesday at 10 where i'm here so in the bedroom and i find gary into my bedroom y'all kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it works so well that way later on <laughs> <laughs> and I have accoutrements. Right? <laughs> right. All right. Well, don't do anything I wouldn't do with my advice. <laughs> At least if I say that, you've got some freaking leeway. Right. <laughs> you both give me a lot. Of leeway. <laughs> yeah. Do what you want. Do what do. you want. Live your life. Live your Love life. your life. Love, your Love life. yourself. You get this one to play with. So uh, make the most out of it and have fun with it. That's right. Thank you. Thank you all. Mm. All right. If you can't be good, be good at it. And uh, see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.